Hello, in this video, we're going to show you how to set up SDL using code blocks on a Windows machine. If you're interested in just some raw MinGW or something like Visual Studio or Xcode or something else, some other setup environment, feel free. We'll have videos covering that. If we don't, feel free to ask and we will help you out. So, first of all, you need to download a couple of things. So, if you open up your browser, go to the libsdl.org website. There'll be links to every link that you will need, so you can get them from the description. Go to the download section. And now, what you want to do is download the development libraries. You want to download MinGW because when we download code blocks, we'll be using the MinGW version. I've already got it downloaded, but once you have this downloaded, fantastic and what you want to do is let me just show you Google CC cleaner or C cleaner I always say CC cleaner even though there's only two C's there so I'm going to go to wherever you've got it downloaded for me it's here Chrome and once you've done that extract it like so then copy the folder into somewhere where you're designating as like a development folder I've just got a folder called development in local disk C like so and I've got a folder there which is the SDL2 MinGW32-bit which is what we downloaded I renamed it so it will be easier to you know just remember access plus also update as well we can just easily copy code files into there instead of having to you know relink stuff because it's named 1.0.1 for example and it's 1.0.2 and we don't want you know an old version name to linger on so in here is all of the code files and this is what we'll be linking to our project once you've done that you want to download code blocks so go to code blocks just google that then go to code blocks or codeblocks.org straight away and you want to go to downloads and you want to download the binary release and now from here you can do the no setup version if you're allergic to setups, GUI setups, but I recommend using the setup version. So there's regular setup, then there's the MinGW setup. You want the MinGW one because you have the MinGW GCC compilers, all of that stuff built in, which is what we're going to be using to compile our project. So once you downloaded that and installed it, it's a simple process to install it, just a simple executable. Run that, install it. Once you're all done, fantastic, we can get to the process of creating our project. So open up code blocks once you've installed it. And now what you want to do is click create a new project, click empty project, click go. And now you just want to name it. I'm going to name it SDL Tut. So I'm going to save it on the desktop. Click next, make sure it's got the GCC, the GNU GCC compiler selected. If it hasn't, there's a chance that it's not installed. If it's not, just open up MinGW and just install it. Process is very simple. We should have it already done once you've installed code blocks. Click finish. And now from here, you want to go to project, properties, and now in here, you want to go to projects build options and in the search directories what you want to do is add the include folder from your SDL folder that you downloaded so click add click the three dots go to your sort your development folder that you've designated go to SDL2 go to include click OK do you want to keep it as a relative path relative will means if you start, like, let's say, moving your project around, it'll start changing the path. Hence, you know, it's relative to where your project is. This is, this is great if you've got a sort of like a separate copy of this framework in your project. And that's great for portability, but it does have its disadvantages. The biggest one being you're creating several instances of the framework. We're going to say no, we're going to have an absolute path, so it's always going to be pointing to our development directory. Click OK. So now once you've done that, we need to include the library file folder. Go to linker, click add, 
click the three dots go to wherever you've put your SDL stuff so again for me it's development SDL 2 Minji W32 bit from here you want to click select lib click OK and now we can start getting on to telling the compiler to link our libraries so to do that you just first of all click no for this as well you want to go to uh, where do we need to go to I'm just trying to remember yeah linker settings then for the other linker options we just need to put dash l min g w32 dash l sdl2 main and then dash l sdl2 and once you've done that we just need to go to ok build targets there's two different types that you can build you can oh there's, there's a few but there's two main ones GUI and console console application is great if you want to do stuff like you know print out to the console it's great for debugging GUI application well it doesn't have that feature GUI is great for release console is recommended for development so we're going to leave it as console application but make sure it is you know console or GUI because it might be something else by default click OK and now that you've done this there's only one thing left before we can start coding and that is to go to our development directory where we've designated uh, the folder that we've designated as our development folder go to bin and what you want to do is that the one that I want I'm just trying to remember oh yep my bad yep you want to select the DRL file, so copy the DLL file from here. You want to paste this into what's it called? Into I uh, actually one thing I forgot to mention. If I go back to the downloads folder, if I go back to what I've extracted here, as you can see, it doesn't reflect what what is in here. I forgot to mention you don't actually need to copy and paste all of this. Just copy and paste this folder or this folder and that's what we renamed to the SDL2 min GW32 this is for 32 bit this is for 64 bit simple as that so within here you would have the SDL for the D dot DLL file I was going to copy and paste it from here because I'm already here but you got to make sure you get the DLL file that is either 32 bit or 64 bit relative to what you've linked your project against again the best way to do it is just go to your designated development directory and copy it from there once you've copied that go to your SDL folder that you've created for your project click paste here so remember I saved my project on the desktop now that's done we can start coding so to code this you just go to file new empty file click yes and now I'm going to create a main.cpp which will be the main entry point for the targets debug and release make sure they're selected click OK and now I'm gonna put hash include IO stream hash include SDL2 forward slash SDL.h as you can see it's picked up the files from our include directory that we configured in our project properties now int main which is the main entry point and this just requires a int argc which is the argument count and then char argv in here we're just going to initialize sdl so to do that do if sdl underscore init underscore everything no sorry that's not the right one we need to do SDL underscore in it like so then within here we specify what we want to initialize you can initialize stuff like different types of input joystick time that sort of stuff graphics we're just going to initialize every single thing keep it simple and if this is less than zero then an error has occurred errors usually are negative one and now we would just do std cout and we're going to just print out sdl could not initialize 
SDL error. Now to print out the SDL error, we just do SDL underscore get error. And that is it. We're just going to do STD end line now. Outside of this, we just do return exit underscore success semicolon and now we're ready to run this so if we click run up here build failed what is it build failing on okay so so no matching function for core to end l okay let's run that again Okay, that is weird why I cannot use end out. So let's see what happens if I were to get rid of this and try to run it. Okay, that's fine. Click yes, that's not a problem. Okay, that's fine. That has worked. You might be wondering why didn't anything show? That's because we're just initializing it in this video. Because this video is just about setting it up on a particular platform, which is Windows and Coblox MinGW. We'll have separate tutorials covering the cross platform code to do stuff like creating a window, show textures, input, all of that good stuff. And I'm going to have to go back and have a look at why STD end line. Okay, let's. I know why it wasn't working. I'll put it as like a method. Uh, that's why. Okay, that's fine. That's all working. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description along with all the other links that you require. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.